There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Von Reeden with ConceptCookie.com, and I am doing the second Halloween live stream for the month, and I am joined by a fantastic artist. His name is James McDonald. You want to say hi? Hey, what's up? And uh, today we are going to be doing ghosts. So I'm going to quickly do the last marketing here because I know you guys are just joining in. And then we will just kind of go ahead and get started. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, even if they don't pertain to what we're working on. Uh, if there are questions to James about like his work, what's it like being in the industry, uh, how much time does he spend on these, things that are general questions that would be good for him to answer. So I will have the questions open on the side at all times, so I will make sure I will feed them to him. And as always, as promised, I wasn't thinking though, but I am dressed up today. I am a superhero, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so that is my costume for the day. But I'm going to jump right into drawing so we can get into this. All right. So starting off, James, you wanted to say who you are and what you do. All right. Yeah, I'm uh, James McDonald. <laughs> and uh, I've uh, been a working professional in the industry, or the video game industry, for about three and a half years now. And uh, I, I just work at a mobile game studio called Z2. And I work on primarily a game called uh, Battle Nations, which is kind of like a free-to-play military, cartoony military game. And oh man, I, it's like a super, super fun project to work on. It's like it's like Pokemon for like a military game because there's over like like 250 units, and um, I've done a good deal of those. <laughs> so it's uh, they, they give me like a lot of creative creative uh, rain on that, but um, I think that kind of helps with uh, kind of like all the other side projects, like the uh, the robot quest stuff that I'm uh, making on the side for fun. Man, 250 though. Oh man, there's probably more than that. I don't. There's like there's like little troopers, like a bunch of different like um, vehicles, planes. Like right now. Uh, we're going to release a bunch of naval units, so I should be like putting out some concept art for that pretty soon. Um, but oh man, I'm like super lucky because I got that job like right out of school, and the company was like a like a startup at the time. It was kind of like it was kind of like a sketchy uh, situation at first because were you not getting paid? Oh man, I think I. I mean, I don't really know what people will get paid off of, like, right away at, like, their first job, their first studio job, but, I mean, I think, you know, I was making super low, um, low amount, and, I mean, I guess that wasn't really, like, the sketchy part, it was more like, I was at my portfolio show, and, like, the, uh, a couple people from the company, um, came up to me and they were like, oh yeah, you should check out our studio. It's like a block down the street. And uh, yeah, just come in like tomorrow. I was like, uh, okay, I don't have a job <laughs> yet. So. And like, so I went and they didn't even like show me around the office. They just like took me to uh, to like a dark like concrete room with no windows and they no. like sat me down for like three hours and I was like, am I going to be working on this Trade Nations game? Which is like a really kind of... I mean, it's a cool game, but if you just looked at it, it's it's sort of like your typical um, like Farmville kind of looking game. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I wasn't like terribly excited for that, but they, they ended up giving me a test for, uh, for Battle Nations, which is um, the game that they wanted to work on the next few months. And, I mean, the company was real small at the time. It was only, like, about 20 people. And uh, so, yeah, I started uh, started working there, like, two weeks after I graduated. And, um, you know, not really knowing anything about, like, what to do or <laughs> I was just kind of going with it. I, I initially thought, like, well, you know, I'll give this, uh, this place a chance, you know, for... Um, for like you know, three to six months or whatever, then I'll see what I can do to move on because it just seemed like a 
like an illegitimate place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and this place is not really going anywhere, but you know, I I uh, I really liked what I was doing, and even though I wasn't like terribly good at it back then, and um, yeah, it it like released and it started to do really well, and like the company just grew like a ton, and uh, I mean I think it got up to like 150 people at some point, but um, what? That was working there at the time. Well, I mean, like you know, over the years, it kind of like Battle Nations is really like they're kind of big success. I mean, they've had some other games that have been pretty successful, but I think like that's what the studio is known for. And I guess I'm like pretty lucky in that sense because it's just like, like, oh, I'm coming out of school. And I guess I'll work on this game. I don't know what it's going to turn out to be, but <laughs> kind of yeah, turned out to be uh, something that's just super fun to work on, and it's like a good opportunity for me to um, kind of, you know, work up a lot of things that I was really interested in, like uh, machinery and. Um, I mean, it, which is kind of funny because when I first worked there, I didn't know how to draw vehicles at all. Like, I'd never really drawn any vehicles or any, like, military troopers or anything. It was just all, like, you know, I, I had a few things in my portfolio that I guess they liked and just kind of went from there. I mean, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I'm super lucky. <laughs> all right, your first question, ready? All righty. All right, this one's... Definitely lengthy, okay. Alrighty. Is it the variety of units bringing a downside to, and I think he's talking about how many you drew, mm -hmm. uh, making the single concept weaker compared to the whole mass and giving you trouble to construct so many unique units? Um, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be answering this correctly, but <laughs> um, <laughs> like it, it started out... Like, the game was a very, like, it was a small scale kind of game, like so we, you know, started out with your typical like trooper with a basic gun, and uh, maybe there's a more badass trooper with a, a mini gun, and you like your light tank, your medium tank, and your heavy tank. And at the time, that's what I thought was going to be in the game. Like I thought that was it, but because of the popularity of the game, it kept going on, and um, we would always release a few new units like every update so I mean you kinda have to I mean, you never have like this impression in the beginning like uh, like yeah this game is one day gonna have over like 300 units I gotta prepare for that it was more like like oh we're making more units uh, <laughs> well I haven't done this yet <laughs> it just kept growing on itself right right it, it's kind of like it, it's grown organically and um, so, um, I guess I hope that answers a little bit of the question. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's something that you can't prepare for in the beginning, but you just kind of roll with it as it goes along. How do you feel like you can keep um, keeping each, like, unique from the last one you did? Because I know, like, when you have to do mass reduction stuff like that, sometimes it can be hard, and, like, a lot of it carries over into the next one. Um, well, it depends on, like, like for example, like, it seems, uh, designs always kind of introduce something new, like, like I said, like, when it first started out, it was pretty basic with the units, like, just your standard gun, and then, like, further down the road, then you, you kind of had, like, your electro trooper and your, your, uh, plague sprayer, and, um, I kind of separated those by, like, colors and, um, you know, like, the lightning trooper gets, like, you know, this baby blue helmet, and, like, a chemical trooper might get, like, a like a green helmet. And you can kind of distinguish certain units by, um, or certain, like, families of units by, you know, even, like, the color helmet that they wear. Or I think, like, the, the most recent kind of set that we came out with was, like, the plasma trooper. And um, they kind of have like this super bright pink uh, like weapon, and it kind of like even like in the animations, like I don't actually make the animations, but um, 
like I have another guy who's like super good at animation do it and like the way that it sounds and the way that it shoots the plasma uh, really differentiates it from you know say a lightning trooper that you know shoots like bzz, bzz, and you can kind of hear it I, um, one second here I'm going to have to take a drink of water <laughs> <laughs> no problem um, so yeah I, I suppose it kind of gets closer to the question or yeah no 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 that was good <laughs> okay cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. no there's a there's definitely a lot of kind of thought process behind how I go about designing things and um, I mean there have like I've always had a partner on uh, like battle nations that I've worked with and they, they've kind of been like interchangeable over the years so usually like when they come in like I, I have to let them know like oh you you can't quite do this because you know this unit over here that probably nobody knows about <laughs> already has that design or um, so it's uh, I don't know I like it, it it can get tricky but um, you're able to I'm a super hardcore player of the game too so it's like like I know I'm pretty in tune with what's what's out there and uh, so I, I guess it's just like knowledge base, like just knowing the game a lot and um, kind of trying to bring something new to it. Yeah. All right. All right, your next question is, have you ever had any color problems, like picking them out? Uh, oh, man. I usually just have way too much fun choosing colors. It's... it's uh, it's one of those things where um, I grew up playing like Super Nintendo games, so and I like to play with Lego still, and I think that that's one of the main things that really um, attracts me to making art is just coming up with like different kind of color schemes. And um, I mean, I've had trouble. I mean, it's there have been some concepts where I'll sit there for a while just picking colors just to see like what's gonna work or not. So, um, same way as you do. Yeah, it's I don't know. Like I guess that's like a big conversation in itself, just like color theory and how I go about color. Because I know there's a lot of uh, things that I actually do quite wrong, <laughs> and are not like what you would actually like learn in school. But like I was just having a discussion, like on how I choose my shadow color, like with my roommate and. Um, I was like, I was trying to talk through what I usually do just on instinct without even thinking about it. And I thought about it, I was like, ah, that's not technically correct. <laughs> but, I mean, it kind of works for me. Like, I, I think I tend to go towards, like, warmer, saturated uh, shadows. And I don't, um, I, I, it's probably kind of weird to most people, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally think it's very personal, like, the way you go about choosing colors, and it's hard to explain to someone how yeah, to do it yeah. correctly, because I don't think there is one way to do it correctly. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. There's probably a lot of times when I was frustrated with trying to get colors correct back then, and I think I got to a point where I was like, uh, what am I trying to do with colors like what do I want to do with colors personally and um, I think that kind of drove a lot of how I choose colors today so okay now you have uh, a very broad question but any uh, tips on painting mm hmm wonder what kind of tips oh man I know, I was like, that could be a loaded question. <laughs> hmm. There's so many different things you could talk off, about. Off of my head, any of those. Uh, you know, back when I first started, because um, I, don't, I don't really know, like I'm sure the, the skill range of the audience is, varies a lot, so I'd probably just go back way back in the day, <laughs> because when I, when I first started, I, I just had no clue like what I was doing with color, like everything that I tried to blend was like really muddy. Um, I just didn't really get like 
how they worked harmoniously together. And I think I I just ended up switching at some point to like, you know, like breaking it down in a very simplistic way, like this chunk of something is red and then this is like the highlight color. And it's just like, you know, like, I don't know, I could do an example here, but um, like here's the base color and then like here's like the highlight color. And I would try to just really focus in on like, you know, is this highlight color awesome? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The base color, like, is it doing it for me? And I would just focus on like those two colors and kind of go from there. Like I might add like a shadow. Like I, I'm kind of... I guess I kind of calculated a little bit more that way instead of like uh, they used to blend a lot, and um, I guess blending I would kind of go about it that way too. It's been a while since I've kind of like done the more blendish kind of painterly style. Yeah. Did you? Would you say you weren't comfortable? Or you weren't like happy doing that kind of style? You know, I, I think I was happy. Like, I grew up on, like, artistically-wise, uh, on conceptart.org. Yeah. And I think, like, back then a lot of people were focusing on, like, the more realistic stuff. I mean, and that's probably what you should focus on in the beginning when you're learning art. Um, or, like, learning how to paint. Because it's very, like, fundamental kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. well, like, that's what I always tell everyone. Yeah, so, like, when I got into, like, my professional you know, work, um, like I got, you know, uh, somewhere along the lines, uh, I was like, what do I really, really like? Like, what really motivates me to do art? Like, why am I here in the first place? Uh, <laughs> just lots of existentialist questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it just, like, it, it goes back to the Super Nintendo kind of art, or it, um, you know, stuff that I would see on Creative Uncut, like, I played, uh, like, Chrono Trigger growing up, or all the Final Fantasies, and, mm, yeah. uh, like, look at that art, it's, I don't know, that's what really kind of speaks to me the most, so, um, I think I sort of went in that direction, I, I think it's more like, noticeable, probably, in, like, the Robot Quest stuff. Um, although I don't really know. I, I don't know what a whole lot of people think about it, but uh, hopefully... I love your Robot Quest stuff. <laughs> What's that? I feel like it's, like, a modern... It's, like, an updated pixel game for, like, the, yeah. the 20th century. I think <laughs> it's really, really good. No, it's super fun. It's just, like, me screwing around, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, it's hopefully it'll be something more than that, like, in the future. Like, we're kind of working on it a little bit on the side now, but it's still in a very early stage. Okay. Oh, we got definitely more questions. Are you ready? Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is good. Are there... Um, Benedict asks, are there any habits you tend to repeat in your works, giving your work your own touch? Or are there some things you highly prefer compared to others, like machines, armory, backgrounds? Oh, man, I prefer uh, just, like, like machines and, like, I think I probably draw, like, way more tanks than I do robots, um, like, at work. And I'm probably defaulting to drawing tanks now, but <laughs> some ghost tank or something. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> what was that one? Is he, uh, I was like, what am I drawing here? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, no, that's the stuff, like, I mean, I mentioned Chrono Trigger. Like, I think a lot of the that influence comes from, like, uh, like you remember, I, I don't know if you played that game, but um, I'm sure some people I've have. watched some play, yeah. Uh, there's, like, a couple characters, like Luca and her, and Robo. And I would say that's what really kind of got me into that whole, like, fascination with just, like, you know, character and robot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I tend to lean towards those. I mean, I've learned quite a bit in the last few years working on Battle Nations, and I've been able to kind of, like, cross that over to 
like some robot quest stuff and kind of like vice versa too. Like sometimes I'll just be like, like okay, I can't get away with this in Battle Nations, but I can do this in my own work. That's and kinda, the best kind of work then. Yeah, it kind of goes back to Battle Nations because as long as it goes, it's just going to keep on getting crazier. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, when I first started off, like, I would have never guessed that, you know, I would be making any kind of robots for that game. But, I mean, like, several months ago, we made a kind of like a knockoff of, like, the power suit and alien. <laughs> and that was, like, so fun. But, like, if I didn't, like, explore, like, you know, robots in my spare time, I may not have understood, like, like how that, like, even is, like, put together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Um, and now, Primary Blue is asking, uh, do you have any tips, uh, or wait, do you have any ideas on what to do to practice and to be confident when painting? Ooh, to be confident. Man, no, I think confidence just comes from, like, just drawing all the time, like, getting in that groove. Like, there, there are mornings where... Um, Actually, every morning I try to wake up early before uh, going to work. Um, after practicing, trying to practice, like, learning how to speak Cantonese for, like, 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, really? I'll try, to, I'll try to, like, draw, or I'll, like, look at, like, I'll go onto a bunch of websites, and I'll just look at a lot of inspiring things that get me, like, really motivated to draw. And, uh, I mean, it... It, it it just kind of like it, it's a time for me to for my brain to kind of wonder I guess and um I don't know I feel like that helps out like when you when I get to work like my brain feels like pretty refreshed and uh, yeah I think like it it helps out a lot like I, I'm a lot more confident just like within my strokes and um. I hope that kind of answers that. I don't. I don't totally know, but <laughs> yeah, I think mean, that's definitely something that um, is asked a lot in concept cookie. It's like, what to do to become more confident? And I always just tell them like, a lot of practice and it takes time. I think expecting like a lot of quality really fast isn't a realistic way of looking at it. And I, I always tell people like, there's a three month hump of just getting used to a tablet, and then it takes like years just to become comfortable in blending in your style and how to go working in Photoshop and being comfortable with all the tools. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it definitely took me a while. Like, even just drawing on a tablet, it's like, at first, it's like, ah, this is a pain in the butt. And then, after a while, you get a little bit more comfortable with it. Now, like, when I draw on paper, I'm like, oh, man, I'd rather be drawn on a tablet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Ellen Tails is asking, what tools are you using in terms of your tablet and your Photoshop version? Oh, oh man. You know what? I'm, I'm using CS4 and it sucks. I should switch to like Creative <laughs> Cloud, which is like $10 a month. I don't, I don't work for Adobe. I think that was like a... A plug. <laughs> uh, just a knee-jerk um, uh, plug for them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I... I have Adobe uh, CS4 on this computer at work. I have CS6, which is pretty cool. Um, especially, like, if my computer crashes, it, like, backs up the file. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, at home, like, right now I'm using an N204 uh, large size. And at work, I have a... I think it's a... It's either a 21-inch or a 24-inch uh, Cintiq. Is it a companion or just a normal one? No, it's just a normal one. Okay. And uh, it doesn't have the scroll wheel, which drives me crazy. Oh, do you use that a lot? There's strips in the back that you touch to, like, zoom in and zoom out. Oh. Yeah, I'm kind of, like, disappointed every <laughs> time I go in. Like, ah, where's my scroll wheel? Mm hmm Totally right. need that thing. Are you ready for this one? Oh, yeah. All right, so this one I think is associated with artists. Uh, it can definitely can affect them a lot. So Lamont is asking, are 
Uh, any of you affected by depression, and how do you deal with it if you are? Oh, man. I think I have, like, other problems, but I'm usually, like, the happiest person. I mean, I, I have too much to be uh, excited about. I mean, I've got a totally awesome job, and <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm really uh, lucky in life, but um, I'm also, like, like super busy and stressed out, so I don't know if it if it totally relates or not. But um, you know, like we were talking earlier, like I I have a grandma, like that lives you know a town down, and uh, she she can't really go out of her house or anything, so I have to go over there a lot and help her out, and um, like the rest of my immediate family lives pretty close in the area, so there's you know, there's a lot of, like, taking care of people and, and running around, and sometimes I don't really, you know, have as much time as I would like to do art. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, I just try to, like, do whatever I can to make time for it. Like, um, like I'll bring, you know, my sketchbook, like, pretty much wherever I go or... Or like even like a handy little notepad or something. Um, I don't know that. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I guess I don't really know how to speak to like depression, just because I. I guess I really haven't been too depressed. That's an honest answer. Yeah. I was trying to think of something that kind of relates to it, but I don't. I don't really know if like stress and depression are like like totally relatable. But well, stress can definitely cause depression. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I think that's what I always like. My my brain was telling me like, yeah, this could <laughs> this could work. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, like at work, I mean, it's not like I just go into work put in a few hours, and there's a lot of, like, stress that comes with, like, oh, hey, James, uh, we need that thing by 2 o'clock today, or, <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and, deadlines, for sure. There's, uh, I mean, there, there's that stress, but there's, there's also, like, I want to make Battle Nations, like, super awesome, and a lot of the time, I want to spend, like, my spare time trying to make it even better, like, in increasing, like, the lore and, like, interacting with, with the players and um, just really help uh, enriching that, that product and that community that we've built up the last three years that it's been out. Um, and then, you know, I come home and it's like, should I work on Validation, the robot quest? Ah, man, my mom's calling me. <laughs> you know, it's just like... Uh, a lot of different things going on at once, and I think sometimes it's just like ah, I need to to sit down and veg out. Mm -hmm. Turn on Netflix. Yeah, so I mean, I, I get stressed out at times, but um, I don't really get depressed. <laughs> so, All right. maybe it's because I am so busy. Ed. Probably, because I think the ones that um, typically ask me about just being depressed are the ones that are looking for a job or they feel yeah, yeah. like catered to artists and it is tough. It can be tough. Yeah, no, I I mean like I went to art school and I mean I have a bunch of friends that are kind of in that category and I, I've seen like how they've been kind of depressed and um, I think it kind of goes to like you want to, you know, have a purpose for your work, and obviously you want to be able to, like, pay the bills and stuff, and, uh, you know, I've, I've known some, like, pretty talented artists that, like, I think they just want to work. They want to put their name on something. They want to, you know, have a, a sense of purpose, like... Um, I don't know if that makes I don't know if I'm like wording that correctly, but um yeah. I mean I I mean for me personally I I love battle nations but I also like really feel like uh I can make robot quests pretty awesome one day. 
and that like helps motivate me to like continue to work on that and it's not just like the art for it it's it's like can I write good characters oh man I suck at writing so I'm gonna try to spend you know some extra time learning how to write or something and uh, yeah I, I guess that kind of gives me a little added purpose mm-hmm yeah, that's a, that's a tough one to answer. <laughs> Alright, this one's a little more art-related, so this one should be good. Alright, this one's from Pascal. And they ask, I've been starting to really enjoy playing with drawing the human figure, but I feel like I'm weak on backgrounds and environments. They're not what I'm interested in at the moment. Is that generally a bad thing? And should I bring myself to practice backgrounds? <laughs> I should bring myself to practice background. I'm terrible at that stuff, but uh, <laughs> you know, from a from a job perspective, there's like hardly anybody out there apparently that can draw like backgrounds. Just you know, like hey, you got 30 minutes to add a background to this thing, so it, it's a good skill to have. But um, I don't know, like. For myself, I think I've always been able, up until this point anyway, I've been able to like get away with uh, not being able to. I mean, I guess it kind of depends too. Like, like there's your like your picture, like oh, I'm gonna draw a background kind of like this. I don't know if you guys are on my screen, but um, but um, yeah. So I thought like I would have to get good at that kind of thing. Um, like, you know, composition and everything, but I haven't actually had to do too many illustrations, uh, like full-framed illustrations. Like, when I think about environments for myself, like, um, I think about it in a purely, like, in-game kind of way. So, like, I'll make, uh, like, tiles, like, uh, here's a dirt tile, or here's, like, a grass tile, or, you know, like, oh, here's a cool rock. <laughs> That's not a cool rock, but... <laughs> um, and I kind of got okay with environments thinking about it this way, but that's because this is, you know, how we make the, um, like, the stuff in Battle Nations, I guess. Or, like, in any game that I would want to work on. Like, I like working on orthographic games, like those that orthographic perspective. So um, might have to explain what that is, just in case. Yeah, so basically, uh, so it's kind of like this forty, like you do everything on this forty-five degree angle kind of grid. I'm kind of drawing it out a little bit um, on my screen, um, and so uh, the whole okay. game is in this perspective, and so like. Basically, you know, I try to, you know, practice getting good at drawing, you know, trees this way. Like, what would be, like, an interesting, you know, tree or something. Or, uh, you know, you could draw rocks and grass and all sorts of, you know, your standard, like, game textures that would go in any game. But this is, like, an orthographic perspective. So, um... I think some of that stuff could lend itself to, like, you know, the traditional kind of, like, backgrounds, like, um, I don't even know what you'd call it, but, uh, like, environmental concepts, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not terribly good at, like, coming up with, like, environmental concepts, like, all the concepty kind of environmental stuff that I've done for Battle Nations and other games uh, in the company have always kind of been on an orthographic grid because I think I can communicate better that way. Um, like how I want like a whole world to look like or uh, you know I can even set a mood kind of like in that orthographic grid. I mean it's a comfort point but it's also like a lot faster for me. Um, yeah. Actually, I like all the little demo stuff you're doing on the side. <laughs> oh, I know. It's, it's like so crude, but... Oh, no, no, that's amazing. That's perfect for live streams. 
Oh, whoops, did you see that? Oh, okay. I like totally lost track of like what layers on what here. Ah, that happens to me a lot. I oh, wait, here's a good question because I find myself working on like one to four layers usually, and uh, I always ask like, do you have a lot of layers that you work with, or is it like one or no. two? No, <laughs> I have like I'll have like two layers, so I'll have like this sketch layer, and then I'll have a color layer, and like for Battle Nation stuff. Like I'll always merge it down to like one layer, yeah, uh, per piece. That is like, so like, um, like say this cannon at the end would be like one piece itself. And sometimes, like I'll just go in and I'll do everything on like one layer because it might be easier that way for me. So, um, like oh here's a cannon with some, you know, some texture in there and, you know, that'll, you know, be enough for, you know, the, the animator or whatever, like, uh, so you can add some, like, bam, highlight, it's like, boom, ready to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, very, I, I, I tend to work on very, um, very few layers. I mean, with the robot quest stuff, there's a color layer, there's a the lion layer, and then there's like some test gradient layers where I'll like overlay some gradients to see how that affects the the base colors. Oh yeah. But, I mean, even that's like like very minimal. So, like I would say, like my style is pretty minimal or quote unquote style, <laughs> just the way that I do things, I guess. Oh man, the word stylized. <laughs> I know, I feel kind of bad for even mentioning that. I was like, yeah, well. No, 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 because yours actually is stylized. <laughs> I remember, like, in art school, that word we get thrown around so much for, like, uh, anatomy or proportions that were out of whack. Yeah. Like, but then the, the excuse was always, well, it's stylized. Oh, man. Oh, I got a word this. Um... Yeah, well, no, like, you're yeah. using it correctly because oh. your stuff is stylized. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's funny because I drew like this super derpy looking horse that just, it wasn't correct on purpose. Uh, this is back in art school in like my first animation class and they were like, they they like handed me like a correct uh, horse with like correct proportions and they were like, this is how you got to draw. And I was like, I don't want to, it's not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, I've never like, I've never tried to be like stylized or anything. I've just always tried to draw stuff that I think looks cool and I mean obviously like my interests come from like an era that's like so based in like you know miniaturization of everything and I mean I'm really into toys and Legos and um, so like I tend to you know soften up all my hard edges or try to make things look kind of cute <laughs> and I mean I'm not even thinking like oh this doesn't like pertain to the style that I'm going for it's just like um, it just kind of happens because I'm just like huh, I think this will be cool not necessarily like correct but just like like I really like this <laughs> yeah I actually wish more people did that where I think they try to focus too much on like does this fit my style yeah, yeah. You can just do what feels right. Right, right. All right, ready for your next question? All righty. Uh, let's see which one do I want. Okay, we'll do this one. Uh, this says, uh, from primarily blue again, I feel like when I do paint studies, it seems to not come out right, unlike my drawing studies. Do you think the best way to start out painting is basic generic, is basic generic objects or more lifelike objects? Hmm. I think he's wondering. Uh, I always said. Are you? Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go. It's all you. You got it. Um, I had a always had a hard time painting from life because I I used to do like a a lot of um. Like still life, just right in front of my desk, and um, I don't think I ever felt like I was getting those absolutely correct either. Like I would look at you know some other artists that were doing it, and they seemed like they you know weren't struggling, and I was like, ah, what's the matter with me? terrible at this 
but uh, I think I had a little bit more success at like doing studies of like other like like masterworks. Like um, when I was in school, I gravitated more towards uh, the the eighteen hundred artists like Sargent and um, a bunch of other dudes I totally forget, but <laughs> the the great painters of the eighteen hundreds and. Um, I started learning a little bit more about like kind of how to simplify strokes and how they were more calculated about their colors that way. And I mean, I, I never got any of those studies correct, but um, I think there was a great deal of like learning just you know how to go about things. And I, I don't really know if like you're trying to go for the, you know, accuracy of trying to pull something off exactly to what it was, or if you're trying to go for the mindset of what that particular person uh, did at the time, like, um, I don't know, I guess, like, for me, like, if somebody was trying to break down my style or whatever, um, I mean, instead of going, like, trying to copy every curve and every, you know, line, uh, exactly, um, you would think, like, what the heck was he thinking when he was making this? And, you know, I think that's kind of more helpful, like, um, like, you know, like, oh, I was thinking this shape would be really cool, and I quickly drew it out like this. And, uh, you know, I gotta go back here, but, um, instead of, like, uh, uh, yeah, I got the shape right, right there, and that's perfect, yeah. So it's just kind of, like, I guess like the mindset, like trying to figure out people's mindsets when they go about something or that might be more helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I'm not very good at like copying uh, something exactly either or getting like the colors correct. It, it was just something that, you know, I think somebody or, you know, artists somewhere along the lines of their their progression, they get to a more deliberate, like, you know, this is how I'm going to make choices when I'm painting something. And they get really good at it after a while that they don't even think about it, but it's, you know, I guess they're thinking about the idea more than, like, the technique. It's probably a... A uh, crazy rant on nothing there, but <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Ho hopefully, I'm ma I'm making some kind of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'll just go on and like people will, like uh, stare at me like, "What are you talking about? Gee, shut up!" <laughs> like, "Oh, sorry, I'm still so getting getting used to telling people things." <laughs> Actually, this next one's pretty pretty much pertains to what you work on a lot. So the question mm -hmm. from Jeremy, and he asked, what are some good art studies for learning how to conceptualize and design sci-fi vehicles in mech? Uh, say the first part of that question again. Oh, sorry. What are some good art studies for learning how to conceptualize and design sci-fi vehicles in mech? Ooh. Oh, man. I think it just goes back to my influences. Like, um, And even it really kind of goes back to like even before I go into work, like I, I'm like looking at pictures, I'm always looking for new kind of machinery and I'll just draw like, I won't draw like a whole machine, but I'll draw like a part of a machine that looks really interesting. Um, like maybe it's something that I've never drawn before. Like in Battle Nations, I, I mean part of the, you know, trying to distinguish things from each other is, you know, just searching for uh, things that I just haven't done yet, and, um, like, almost like, I mean, Battle Nations is almost kind of like playing with Legos. It's like you draw a piece, or you draw, um, and you kind of 
mix and match all these pieces that you just came up with, and uh, after a while you get like a new design. And I mean, I'm I've done this for like years now, so I've been able to kind of build up that that visual library like within my head. And um, I mean, it's still growing. There's there's still like lots to learn. And um, so yeah, just like look at a lot of pictures. Just do a lot of little studies. Don't even think about like drawing it correctly. Just think about like like oh look at this shape I'm gonna try to draw it to memorization almost um, and you know after a while like after years of doing it like it'll just start you know clicking like being able to put those together um, it'll just kinda like start clicking like I, I've always been into like robots and and stuff but like like five years ago I kinda like didn't know how any of it actually worked. <laughs> I don't really know how it works now. I just kind of draw it. So, oh, whoops! It's on a different layer here. <laughs> actually, I'm really glad you said the word visual library because someone just asked that in their next next question. Cool, cool. Uh, it was. Oh, it just. There it is. All right. So Florence is asking you: Do you have any tips for improving uh, your character designs? I find it hard to come up with cool designs. Does it have anything to do with my visual library? Oh, probably. I mean, a little bit. I, it's, uh, huh. I don't know. Like, I, I guess it's one of those things I might be able to answer the question better if I had a little bit of context. Because um, you could be, you know, making really cool stuff already. And it might not look cool now or something to you but maybe to other people but um uh, I don't know I I think it's just something you know you gotta work at and you know you'll, you'll have the visual library but putting together the visual library also takes a little bit of time um, yeah it's very true yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, I think I mentioned earlier, it's just like you you get to a point where you choose a direction to go, and um, I think, you know, if you have a good direction, then a lot of that stuff will just kind of fall into place, and people will kind of see, start to see that consistency in, like, what you're trying to communicate. Um, No, yeah, that's about right. Whoopsies. Wrong thing there. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the artists that I talk to, um, they pull, like, their visual libraries are, like what you were saying, they're generated when they're kids, and, like, what inspired them then still inspires them now. Oh, yeah, very true. So I definitely agree with that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this one's a good one. Um... I want to say Diago, but it says Diogo. Uh, <laughs> sorry if I'm butchering your name, but uh, he's asking, how to train imagination drawing? I can do it through observation, but not alone. Hmm. So I think he's like asking, how do you draw just without using reference, and you just draw straight from your, your brain? Ooh. Kind of goes back to that like whole visual library, but it also, I mean... Like, you just have to do it. Like, it's, um, like, you can do studies for, for years and years, and you can get good at doing studies and, like, copying stuff, and uh, you'll be good at that. But, I mean, drawing from your imagination is just kind of like, um, just kind of like another skill that you have to get good at and I mean I oftentimes think back to you know I, I was working at at Safeway or something like several years ago just just starting out like with like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go after this dream of being a video game artist and like I, I would sit back there like in the seafood department and I would try to draw robots, and, like, everybody who came over, you know, that I worked with were like, eh, you're not very good at this, are you? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 
I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to try to get good at it. And I mean, back then I had no visual library to speak of, you know. It, and but I tried to always mix in a little bit of um, imaginary drawing, I guess, uh, or drawing from my um, imagination. Because, I mean, like, that's what I really wanted to do. And so I always kind of valued that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's definitely always a work in progress. And, you know, you don't want to give up. So <laughs> keep doing it. Um, okay, we got a question for both of us. Oh, cool, cool. All right, it says, for both Tim and James, how did you two learn pixel art so well? What were your two ex your experience when you started pixel art, and how did you master it? Any tips for beginners? So I'll do that <laughs> first. Oh, man, I wouldn't say I'm, like, a master of pixel art or anything. I've done, like, I've done a few things, like, last year. I, That's I really really pretty fantastic, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I always tell people, I'm like, well, that's just, a lot of that is more like basic art. Like if you, like, uh, if you know, like your basics of art, like you can take that to any medium pretty much, right? And like I think the first few things, like even that robot quest, uh, like the the room with like the robot in it and um like the, it was like the first one that I did, like room wise. Uh, I like that one a lot. Does it have a lot of red and greens in it? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, like I, I just drew a sketch, like I'm drawing now, and I sized it down, and I went in like pixel after pixel, just like painstakingly, and I made it like that way, and that's just like it wasn't the most efficient way of making pixel art, like, I didn't really know exactly what I was, you know, what the correct way of going about it was. Like, I, I had a lot of smaller stuff that I worked on before that just to kind of get into pixel art. But uh, that, that was probably the one that I spent, like, quite a little bit of time on just to really kind of figure it out. And, um, you know, the next couple that I did, I just tried to do straight up in pixels. So, I mean, I'm still, you know, still kind of working on, you know, making the pixel art, you know, or getting comfortable with, with that side of things. Because I, I eventually, like, want to try to test it out with, like, 3D textures and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I think I, I've seen some, like, really cool stuff online where they kind of, like, they they model everything in 3D, but then they they texture it with pixels and it comes out like really nice. Mm. I'm still kind of keeping that that 3D avenue open even though like I'm more of a you know primarily a 2D artist. Yeah. Like I was actually trained to do 3D in school. I actually thought I'd be like doing 3D like right out of school but... <laughs> Same here. Like on your degree are you uh, was it game art and design or...? Yeah it was a uh, game art and design at <laughs> The Art Institute of Seattle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you and, have uh, an Institute degree? <laughs> well, I um, tell people this because uh, when I graduated, my portfolio was all 2D, even though all through school I was only taught 3D. Mm -hmm. And when I tried, when I graduated, they told me I was going to fail my portfolio class and they weren't going to graduate maybe because it's all 2D. And I argued with them for a while. And they let me go through. They gave me a D minus in portfolio too. And my concept book was all 2D stuff, but then I got my job at that portfolio show. Yeah. So I always tell people, always project what you want to do, you know, in the long run. Like if you really don't want to be a 3D artist, don't have a portfolio that's full of 3D work because then a company might hire you to do just that. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. No, they were telling me the kind of the same thing, like, well, they didn't, they didn't threaten to, like, fail me or anything, because, I mean, the last two quarters, like, I just worked super hard to get a 3D portfolio, and, um, 
like so I, I had the pieces in place to potentially get a 3D job, but I just think like the people that came into that portfolio show grabbed you right away. They were just like, well, we have this 2D game, and you look more like a 2D artist than a 3D artist. So it's funny because like my initial title there, I think my title still kind of is like 2D slash 3D artist. Um, but you don't do any 3D art. No, no. I think I've made some textures for other games that have never actually been used. <laughs> so your title might be slightly misleading is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Well, I guess like my title changed like pretty recently back to like just a strictly 2D title, but um, like for like the first what three years, I mean, I had the uh, the whole 2D, 3D, and like sometimes I just get the the CEO saying like, yeah, this is why we hired you for 3D. We're gonna have you do it someday. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> I'm still open to it, but I, I don't know how useful I'll be because, you know, now we we're not like a startup anymore. We can afford to pay like actual 3D artists. Mm -hmm. We're like actually good at it. I'm like, you know, I I never really got that good at it. Just very student, like, hey, here it is for graduation. Yeah. Oh, and I guess before I close this uh, question out, I think it's also good to kind of get familiar with, like, pixel art terms and how to paint with pixel art, where, like, um, knowing what pillow shading means or dithering. Like, I don't know if, if you know these things, Jamie, or, like, these specific terms. I think I know what they... I've heard them before, and I know what they mean, although, like... I guess I never really referred to it. Um, like I guess I, I guess I use I don't I don't use pillowing, but I've used dithering quite a bit, and I think that's probably like an ongoing thing to really like fine tune. There's definitely some guys out there that are just super good at it, and oh, yeah. like you know that guy who's like making Owlboy. I can't even remember his name. I feel terrible, but um. Like, have you seen Owlboy? No, no. I'm like, I really want to just Google it right now, but I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. I'm going to write it down the everybody side. else to go look at. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the dithering in that game is crazy. And then there's, like, this other guy that I follow um, that has been, like, a huge influence on my work. Uh, Nicholas Jansen is, a, is, like, a website called Android Arts. Yeah. And, uh... His is like more simplistic, like almost, you know, hearkening back to the to the regular NES days. But it's so it's so good. <laughs> Definitely yeah. recommend to like check that out. So I'd say, I mean, if uh, if you really are interested in getting into pixel art, which is what I think he seems to be doing right now, um, really just familiarize yourself with as much pixel art, like not only terms but artists in general, and like who it. Like what kind of pixel art do you like, right? Yeah. I have people thinking that there's only one style of pixel art, but there's like a few, I would say, that are generally different and like distinguishable from one another. Yeah, definitely. There's certain like limitations that people set on themselves, and um, like I personally don't really set too many limitations. I mean, I try to go for like a Super Nintendo kind of era style, but I mean, a lot of people go for like regular Nintendo, or I see some like Commodore 64 stuff out there, so <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's whatever you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Okay, we got a lot of questions, so I'm going to... Alrighty. Okay, let's see here. Number one question right now is from Victor. He says, I have trouble picking backgrounds for my drawn images. Do you have any tips about how to pick the right background for an art piece? <laughs> oh man, I, uh, you know what I do, like, say if this was, like, a finished thing, like, my interpretation of a background is to, like, put it on, like, a pedestal with, like, some grass and, like, to hint at, like, the, uh, the environment around it, like, ah, I might have this tree that's been there for a thousand years and it's an important part of, you know, the the ghost lineage or whatever. Um, and I get that from, like, just being, like, really into toys and um, 
and stuff, uh, and like stuff in that nature, I guess. And I think it can communicate a lot of that particular unit or concepts, like background, just with like a snippet. Um, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of uh, putting like a character and like just decking out like the background in full. Um, I don't really have too many tips on going about it that way. I mean, there's some like really cool stuff out there, but I mean, just like the way that I go about it is just in a very miniature fashion. Mm -hmm. It's like all the focus point, like right on the environment. I like, actually have to do that stuff every now and then, like with the uh, with the uh, like splash pages at work, because that those will have like characters and and a background, but I'm usually like asking my art director like, uh, you got any tips, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, is that really how you talk to your art director? <laughs> we we go back and forth and say like the dirtiest things and <laughs> we just make sure that HR is not around. <laughs> that fun is what you're saying. What's that? So you have fun. Oh man, it's it's totally fun there. It's uh totally chill and laid back. I mean, I know everybody kind of has like different experiences with the uh, with the game industry and everything, but I mean, for the most part, like where I'm at and uh, just like my own position in the company and everything, like it's pretty chill for me. <laughs> that sounds like it. Sounds awesome. All right. Uh, next question is from Ellen Tails again, and she or he is asking when painting something that has no real life references, so things like ghosts or dragons, is it better to draw from other artists' work or try to combine some reference to get something close to what you're trying to learn? Hmm. You know, I I used to draw from like used to like heavily rely on like other artists that I really liked back then. Um, and I think, you know, it kind of goes back to that saying, like, <laughs> fake it until you make it or something, but... Um, oh, I like that. It's uh, it's one of those, you know, at first you might not know who you are. I mean, it's... After a while, you start to do things and you start to just make choices without really thinking about it too much. I mean, I guess that goes to the whole, like, style conversation without actually going for a style. Yeah, well, maybe, like, a better analogy. Actually, this might be, like, a horrible analogy. But, uh, <laughs> I say, like, you're in middle school and uh, you're trying to figure out, like, you, you look around and you're like, ah, man, those pants really fit good on that dude. I want to buy pants like that. And, uh, you go and buy pants like that, and it's like, like they're too they're too baggy or something, or they just don't fit right. They're kind of goofy looking. But what you don't realize at the time is like, uh, <clears throat> like, like maybe you're a skinny dude, and that dude over there is like a bit chunkier, and he can kind of get away with that kind of thing because that's who he is. Um, and then you kind of like as you grow up, you start to you know buy clothes that actually fit you right and you don't even have to think about it anymore. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like like art. Like sometimes you just try to go for something in art that it's like, ah, that's really cool, but it, it's not necessarily you. I fully agree with that. That was a great analogy. <laughs> I totally forgot what the question was. I was like the whole time I was there, and I was like, <laughs> wait, am I totally getting off track here? <laughs> um, pretty much like uh, things about like dragons and stuff. I definitely think you can pull from real real life references. So look at like dragons or Komodo dragons or things that uh, definitely relate or are similar to what a dragon or what we kind of established a dragon looks like. But I think it is good to also pull from what's already established. So like look at the Lord of the Rings dragon or look at like really high end popular dragons and see how uh, that artist interpreted what a dragon looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would probably, you know, 
I don't really know how to draw dragons or anything, but I'd probably look at some other dragons out there just to kind of get some ideas flowing. And, you know, you always kind of start out somewhere that's sort of based on something that's already out there. But once you, you know, draw it a few more times and really play around with it, um, it starts to become yours after a while. I mean, that's, that's with anything in the creative process. Mm-hmm. Agree. Okay, someone's asking, this is from Jeremy, he's asking, as a beginning artist, what is a good regiment to keep in learning new skills? How do I break away from learning theories via tutorials online versus putting those theories to practice on paper? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, probably goes back to that existentialism, <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> I think I know enough to kind of get a stab at it. I mean, you're always you're always going to improve, and you're always going to try to do things. Like, you're always going to try to do studies that will help you improve in areas. Like, I still have bouts where I'll, you know, I'll draw, like, a bunch of hands, or I'll, you know, try to get better at my anatomy, just on a very basic level. But, um... Like, I think, like, the more that you do art or do what you're trying to do within art, um, like, the more you'll probably try to spend time making your own stuff rather than, uh, rather than, like, doing studies all the time. I just think, like, in the beginning, like, the very first few years is probably when you should be putting a lot more into, like, the studies just to, like, learn you know, everything you possibly can or everything that you possibly need to know with what you want to pull off eventually. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but yeah, I, I still study, like, every now and then because I, I'm not, I'm still developing. I mean, it, I've only been, like, a professional for, like, just a few years now. So, I mean, I think I seriously got into art, like, back when I was like 22, and I just turned 29, so, um, oh, yeah, I guess, well, how was it back when we were 22, like, would you say you were doing more, um, practice, or were you doing more, or, sorry, more, like, fundamental stuff, or were you just trying to do your own thing, and, no, I was trying to do fundamental things, I didn't even know what it was that I really wanted to do, I mean, like, I mean, I could argue and say, like, well, I probably wanted to do video games because that's what I, you know, grew up with. Or, you know, going back to, like, the Super Nintendo stuff. But I, I didn't really know that back then. Like, even when I ended up transferring from, like, uh, the University of Oregon to the Art Institute, like, I went there with the impression, like, you know, I could be an animator. I could be a, a rigger. I don't even know what a rigger is. You know, I, <laughs> I was very open. So, um... Like, I just studied, like, everything. Like, I, on top of the curriculum that they gave us at, you know, the Art Institute, I um, also had a, I, I also just did a lot of studies on my own, like, just to get better at 2D stuff. And, like, even at Oregon, like, like I literally had no like, social life. Like, I just stayed in and really? studied, like... Um, yeah, I mean, like, like, I think I, I just copied from books, like, I rented a lot of books from the library, um, that I still have, uh, like, you know, the Bridgman, like, anatomy books, I mean, like, I didn't know where to start, and I mean, I think, like, when you're starting out, you just don't know where to start, and the best place to start is, like, well, just getting, understanding, like, the basics, and as you go along, you'll start to do your own stuff. Like, it's just a progression. Like, you'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where's my... Um, this one's very basic, but uh, we'll, go, we'll go with it. So it's, it's from Eric, and he's asking, how do you make textures? <laughs> no, that's a great question. Uh, you know, back when I was painterly, I would just try to, you know... I guess it, I guess it's like the same thing now. It's um like you just try to 
figure it out in the way that you make things. Like, like I have a very cell shaded style, so it's like, how do I go about painting like a, you know, a mossy rock? Well, it's, you know, I'll do like my little rock shape here, and then I'll, you know, it's all using like the same brush. Like, I just use a hard round brush. If there's nothing like crazy, uh, crazy complex about you know any of the tools that I use um, and then like to create texture maybe I'll I'll go in I'll add like little nicks here and there and then you know get my my uh, green my greens going like ah oh, yeah here's a spot of moss here's a spot of moss and then sort of build up you know dark to light um, and then like pretty soon you know you have uh, you got like a little mossy rock here. <laughs> you know, I I basically just try to figure out figure things out like texture wise with you know very limited amount of brushes that I use. Like sometimes I'll like use an airbrush if I'm feeling really uh, ambitious. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like, you know, there's subsurface scattering. It's like, oh, what is subsurface scattering? It's like a lot of little, you know, the light hits and you kind of get this thing going, you know, like with the dots, but, you know, it's, uh, th there is some textures that are harder to figure out that way, but I usually just go at it and try to solve my problems <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's it can be kind of tedious at times, but I, I mean I always like really enjoy the challenge. Yeah, that was a good way to answer it. All right, so Tio is asking, have you ever had to draw a concept of something that exists and is boring and uninteresting, and you have to make it look good and visually interesting, but keeping it truthful to the source? Do you have any tips for this kind of situation? <laughs> Oh jeez. <laughs> I don't know if I have like any any like hardcore Battle Nations players like listening to this podcast or I mean I'm sure everybody at work like totally knows about it too. But I mean we released um on Steam pretty recently and part of releasing on Steam was putting TF2 characters in the game. And I, I mean, I think for most people, they would, they, they would be like, oh, man, that'd be so cool, draw TF2 characters for a game, no way. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, uh, I mean, I did, like, the first one that I did was, like, the heavy. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, that was kind of cool, you know. And, and then, like, and then they came back, and they were like, yeah, you're going to do more of these characters. I was like, eh, I don't... <laughs> And they're cool, but they're not they're not mine. I mean, like, uh, I didn't have as much fun. Like, it felt more like I was doing a job. Like, with Battle Nations, like, I'd, I like it because it's just, like, <laughs> like, I get to do, like, whatever. And it's, uh, they gave me way too much artistic freedom there. <laughs> and so, like, when, when situations like that come up, it's, it's always a little, uh, you know, like, Oh man, I forgot it. <laughs> I gotta sometimes bite the bullet and do this stuff. Isn't mine. I guess it's just yeah. It's basically whenever it feels like something I don't really own as much. All right, now we have about 15 minutes left. So anyone that wants to ask any more questions, please ask it now. That way we can get it in before the stream ends. And we'll kind of finish up and try to polish our ghosts here. I'm really taking a good look at yours now. <laughs> I don't even know. I was just like, yeah, I'll draw a ghost in like a mech suit. Maybe I'll get to drawing some pumpkins. I'll give a, I'll give that little, little background and see how far I can get with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of crazy, like, time's flying by a lot. <laughs> yep, I know, with live streams, I'm always like, oh, gosh. Like, or anytime I start to feel good about my piece, I'm like, well, I got five minutes left. It's like, ugh, 
Like down to rush. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's see here. Someone's just saying they have to go, but thanks for the great information. We'll look forward to the next one. Take care. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. My mic is being weird right now. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. For whatever reason, once Google Hangouts gets like an hour and 15 minutes, it starts acting strange on me. Oh, whoops. Were you like asking me like a whole bunch of questions and I was like, eh, I wonder if you're going to ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, like keep what I'm going to do here then. What? Make finishing touches to this thing. <laughs> mm hmm. I didn't even realize that that much time had gone by. I know, right? Crazy. It's usually like when you're talking about something, like I think time just goes by faster. Because you're yeah, actually that's... thinking about the question and like you're not even realizing how much time is passing. Yeah. Yeah, because we finally got to the point where it's like, I'm not even able to see the questions right now. Oh, really? Hmm. So if any of you are asking new ones, I am sorry. I cannot see them. But I guess uh, I'm trying to think of like the general questions I normally get for to a stream, so I can at least ask yeah, them. Sure. Um, what is the most popular one? Okay, so you kind of answer that you only use one brush for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yep, what do you think is like the biggest more. benefit of that? The biggest benefit, um, it's uh, it's like limitations. It's like when you kind of you know limit yourself to a certain number of colors, or you li limit yourself to a certain number of you know brushes. I think there's something you know inherently kind of pretty about it. Um, I mean, like. Take Legos, for example, like, well, I guess there's like a crap load of Legos now, but Lego pieces, but um, when you say something like made in Legos, it's, there's something really interesting about it, or like even pixel art, you're so limited with, you know, you have to make, uh, like, good decisions with, like, every color and every, um, every stroke that you make, um, so, oh, yeah, I fully agree with that. I mean, if you have like too much of something, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we've all heard like you know, use too many colors. I mean, it's not as interesting as you know, using like two or three colors or something. So if you kind of apply that to a lot more than just like colors or strokes um, or like brushes, uh, you start to start to form something that can be, you know, a little bit more cohesive and, um, I mean, that isn't to say that you shouldn't, like, go and explore, like, just different kind of brushes, like, within a piece. I think there's a lot of value to that. Um, yeah. Oh, now the questions are appearing. So strange. Um, all right, then I'll ask. Okay, Lily is asking, line art-wise, uh, do you have problems with it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm still getting used to, you know, the finer art, or the finer line. Um, like, with, like, what I'm doing now, I mean, this is pretty sloppy, but, um, I guess I'm not paying attention to it as much. Uh, I mean, it kind of depends on what you want to do with uh, with your lines and stuff. Um, like, I struggle with it just because, 
Uh, I don't know if I've put in enough time as I should have, or I should be putting into it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, good question. I uh, I definitely do struggle though. Yeah, liner is definitely not my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely like I like it when people have good line art, and I mean, it kind of depends on one's definition of like what good good line art is, because there's so much good stuff out there, and um, I mean, it's just kind of like line weights. Like, where do you want to put, you know, more emphasis on and there's a correct way of doing things, and then there's an interesting way of doing things, and uh, you know the correct way might not necessarily be the the most interesting way. And you can do anything with lines, just like you can do anything with colors. And um, you know, after you do it for a while, I'm sure you'll kind of like run into things that you personally like and personally don't like. So yeah. Hi, we got a question from Nicholas who's asked, how much time do you have to work on your own personal art while you were in school? I find it's hard to work on your own stuff while going to school and having a job. Yeah, like I, I always had to have a job. Um, like I said, I worked at, you know, Safeway. I was an RA. I worked in a bookstore. I'd, I had so many jobby jobs, like, during the time that I was trying to get good at art, and I was going to school full-time, and um, I mean, Safeway, like, I was, I think I was working, like, 30 hours a week on top of full-time, and, um, I mean, back then, I just brought a sketchbook with me. I think I put more emphasis on drawing back then. I mean, this was probably before I even got a tablet. Hmm. Um, I mean, if you really want something in life, uh, it's got to learn how to make time for it. Yeah. I mean, it's... Like, even now, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, how to do all the stuff I want to do, like, with Robot Quest and, you know, with Battle Nations and, you know, while taking care of the family. Like, if, a few years ago, my family didn't even care what I was doing, but <laughs> uh, now that I, you know, said I have a job and everything and they're like, ah, can you come over and, and pay for this? It's like, ah, oh, man, you guys never bothered me about this before. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot more family time now that I have to kind of maneuver in and out. Uh, so, I mean, it, it never gets any easier. I mean, I suppose my next stage in life is, you know, how do I continue to do art when there's kids around? You know, it's. <laughs> Uh, you always have to figure out, and sometimes you have to make sacrifices to other things in life to make room for, you know, what you think is more important. I would definitely say, like, um, whenever I would do portfolio reviews of student work, I could always tell which were the students that only did what they were assigned and the students that took their personal time and worked on their own things. And those always seemed to be the ones that stood out to me because it showed me that they were enthused and like passionate enough about art yeah. in general that they would do it on their own time. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I go to uh, like my office is right down the street from the portfolio shows, <laughs> so I usually I try to go as much as I can, and um, yeah, I always notice the assignments. I'm like, ah, eh, come on, and the other kid did this right next to you. Mm -hmm. Why are you showing this? <laughs> I can definitely understand what they mean by like having a job as well. But even like a really bad one, I worked at a seafood restaurant and I shucked oysters for like four hours every time I went there. Like, that's all I did. So I hope stuff like or jobs like that gives you even more motivation to not have to do that the rest of your life. Yeah. All right. Let's see well, here. We got five minutes, so I'm gonna rush through these questions. Are you ready? All righty. All right. Have you seen the Lego movie? And thanks for the stream. It was very useful. <laughs> Have you seen the Lego movie? <laughs> oh, man. Like, 
I was like the uh, my company took us all to go see that movie the day it came out, and I was just spazzing out like the whole the whole time. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, this is so awesome!" Everything just how they went from like totally detailed down to like super miniaturized kind of storytelling, and oh man, we we just had like a like a Lego convention down here in Seattle, and oh man, just I, I love Legos. I mean. I could probably go on about it, but probably another another time. <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought the Lego movie like was just so well crafted and like it was funny, it was quick, and like I agree with you. Like the moments for anyone that's seen it, like do anytime they would fly away or a ship would go away and they like would have it like their hand like would hold it or like when the ghost was on a string or any of the items that they found like uh, the gum or the sucker. Like, it's so reminiscent of our childhood and playing with Legos. I thought they just did a fantastic job. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, uh, yeah, go ahead. I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> All right. Anton is asking, have you ever worried about your art skill rolling slowly backwards to a worse level? Is there a way to control this? Um, yeah, I mean, I thought about that. I mean, sometimes I think about it now. I mean, like, my work used to be a lot more painterly and detailed, and now it's uh, <laughs> kind of simple. And but I mean that like that's just like where I want my art to go. I mean right now anyway. I mean you'll always kind of go off in different directions and like whatever you do. And I mean you can always look back and be like, yeah, that was you know that was really cool back in the day. But I mean your brain is always kind of going towards a different place, like it's constantly moving, and um, I don't know, I mean, the, the only thing that I would worry about is if you stop doing it in general, like whatever that activity is, like with drawing, like if I stop drawing, then I'd be like, well, yeah, I'm out of practice with whatever direction I was trying to go towards, mm-hmm. so. Okay, let's see, we got... Two more. So the first one is, what brushes are you using? <laughs> Hard round. <laughs> Hard round brush. I used to have a tumbler called Hard Round Fantasies. <laughs> that's terribly dirty, but <laughs> I don't. That's that's not even doesn't even exist anymore. So don't try to find it. <laughs> <laughs> they Google it right now. <laughs> and then I only use a hard edge and a soft edge, at least for this painting. Yeah, I think I busted out a, I busted out the airbrush a little bit here. A little bit at the end, but it probably doesn't matter too much. <laughs> Are you doing some gradient work right now? Yeah, I just threw like a gradient on there. I did, this kind of turned out a little browner than I than I wanted it to be. Mm. But uh, I was gonna try to possibly do some crazy Halloween design, but I. Designing stuff usually takes uh, a little bit more brain effort. Yeah, I agree. Like, I'm like, oh, wait, this thing goes here. I mean, this is this is pretty standard kind of thing, so it's pretty fun. All right, and our last question for the stream is, do you think there can be too much detail in a sketch before you go to finish the piece? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you always want to, um, you know... I guess there's a saying called, like, uh, you know when something's done when you can't take any more away from it? Um, I remember uh, Tom Scholl said that in one of the future poly classes that I took. <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, so that, that kind of stood with me. Um, I mean, there's always things that you're going to like within a design that you don't want to take away because you think it might add something, but it probably doesn't. And sometimes you just got to roll with it. <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, your your design skills will kind of work themselves out after a while and, um, you know, you'll end up being a better judge of what goes in and what goes out. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really, like, what I usually do, I didn't really, like, zoom in and zoom out a lot on this, but uh, usually, like, I'll zoom in and zoom out a lot on, like, just work in general. 
and uh, you know, hopefully we can kind of change it up here. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm still learning a lot about design and stuff, and design theories and stuff like that. Yeah. I, it's like an ongoing learning experience doing yeah. digital art. Definitely, uh, definitely fun stuff. Oof, that was but perfect. I, yeah, just uh, you know, just keep on going and enjoy enjoy the process of being an artist. <laughs> yeah. All right, and that marks the end of our live stream. All righty. <laughs> Thanks for having me, and thanks everybody for <laughs> for listening in. Yeah, so fun. so I want to. I mean, thanks again, James. It was as always. I mean, that was really it went by really fast, and uh, <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming to this. We have our next one on Wednesday, and we are doing it with Jonathan Hamilton. So just stay tuned for that, and it'll be at our normal time slot of two p.m. till three thirty. So if that is something that interests you, check it out. And then this one will be on our YouTube page. And as always, thanks for coming and listening, guys. So one last goodbye for me and James. Any last word? I don't know. Just thanks again for everybody coming. <laughs> it's been totally awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. See you in the next one. All right. See you later.